Hello guys, this is Deepika from mytutorialrack.com. In this tutorial, we will talk about the insert operation using the database methods. So we have already seen how to do the DML statements and what are DML statements and how to write the insert statement and delete statement and undelete statements, update statement, etc. So we have already taken a look at the DML statements. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the database insert operation and how is it different than the DML statements. So first, let's look at the syntax of the method. So the method that is insert method is available in the database class. It takes two parameters. One is the record to insert, means if you have a list, you can provide the list of the records you want to insert. And the other one is a Boolean parameter, is uh, all or none. Now, what is the purpose of this Boolean parameter? The optional all or null parameter specifies whether the operation allows partial success or not. So let's say if you have 10 records that you want to insert into the Salesforce database and out of those 10 records, if let's say one record is at fault, means there is some required information missing in that particular record and you're trying to insert a list which has that wrong record as well. If you have set this all or none parameter value to false and if a record fails, then the remainder of the DML operation is still going to go and successfully succeed means it will go through if out of those 10 if one record is, a, is having an issue the rest of the nine records will be successful this method returns a result object and we can use this result object to verify which records were successful which records were at fault and what is the reason for the failure of the record so we can get a detailed description on which records were successfully inserted and which records were failed using the save result object so let's go ahead and do an example to illustrate the insert operation using the database methods. So far, if you can see, if you go to your Salesforce, you will see these are the customers that we have and these are the invoices we have. So we have about three invoices and uh, these are the customers that we have. So what we're going to do now is we will try to insert a customer record and we will try to insert two invoice record related to that particular customer. And out of those two invoice record, we will make one record at fault. So let's go ahead. And now we're going to go ahead and see how to insert the invoice records using the insert operation, the database insert operation. So we're going to go back to our developer console here. And this is our console. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and insert operation. We're going to go ahead and do an insert operation using the database method. So the first thing is we're going to go ahead and create a customer object and uh, we're going to go ahead and the name of the customer object would be test so we're going to go ahead and create a customer object and the name of the customer object is test here so we're going to go ahead and specify the name as test and then we're going to go ahead and use a DML insert query to insert this customer object in the database. So we're going to just going to go ahead and use this insert DML statement. We're not using the database insert, we're just doing a simple insert to insert this particular customer record. Now the next step would be is to create a list of the invoice records that we need to create corresponding to this customer. So for this particular customer, I will add two invoices. So let's go ahead and create a list of the invoice that we need to add. So we're going to go ahead and create an empty list right now. So it is going to be a list of invoices that we need to add. So this is going to be a list of invoices. The name of the list is invoice list to insert. And then we're going to go ahead and create our first invoice that we need to add. So we have created a list of the invoices that we need to add. It's an empty list right now. So we're going to go ahead and create our first invoice object now. So how are we going to go ahead and create? We're going to go ahead and say invoice. It's going to be apex invoice underscore underscore c. This is the API name for the invoice object. And the name of the invoice is, let's say, obj new invoice. And now we're going to go ahead and set the status of the invoice to pending. So this is going to be 
the status of the invoice is going to be the pending status. And then the second thing is we're going to go ahead and set this customer because the customer is a required field on the invoice object. I'm repeating again and again. The customer is the required field on the invoice object. So we have to provide the value for that particular customer for this invoice if you want to create the invoice record. So the customer for this particular invoice, we're setting up the customer here. So the customer value is, It is the same customer that we inserted earlier. So this is the one that I'm going to go ahead and use. So this is the customer. So the customer is going to be this particular customer. And the next thing is the amount paid. So there's another field on the invoice object called the amount paid field. So what is the value for the invoice amount paid? So let's go ahead and provide the value for that as well. It's not a required field, but we just want to provide the value for that as well. Let's say the value is 1000. Now what we can do is we have created an invoice object. Now we're going to go ahead and add this invoice object to this list. So we're going to go ahead and use the add method in order to that add particular invoice. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a second invoice that we need to add. So we're going to go ahead and create a second invoice. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and copy this line here creating a second invoice object and then we are setting up the status of the invoice let's say the status of the invoice is also pending of the second invoice is also pending and then in this case we are not setting up the customer value so we are not giving any customer value no even if it's a required field we are not providing it so this is going this particular invoice is having some issues because we are not providing the customer required field and then we're going to go ahead and set up the amount paid value here. So the amount paid, let's say for this invoice is 700. And this is going to be the second invoice that we're trying to add. So what we have done so far is we have created two invoices. One has the status is pending. The customer is this particular customer that we created earlier. Amount paid value is 1000. And then we're using this, we're adding this particular invoice to the list. Then we are creating a second invoice. The status of the second invoice is also pending. Amount paid is equals to 700. But if you keep a note here, we are not providing the customer value for the second invoice. Now what we are doing is we are going to go ahead and use the database insert to insert these two records. So if you have already remembered the syntax, the syntax is database dot of insert. And what, is, what are the records that we need to insert? This is the list that we need to insert. So we're going to go ahead and provide this list here. And then what is the value? Uh, all or none. So let's say false. False means if there is a record which is at fault. But what will happen is if you're trying to insert the records, the rest of the records will go through. Except the one record which is at fault. Okay. So what will be the output of this database insert method? The output is going to be the save result. So we, this is the output, save result, and we are storing the output in the variable called SR list. So this is the output is stored in this particular variable, SR list. Now what we're going to do, we're going to see which records were go, went through and which records are having issue. So we're going to go ahead and say for loop. We're going to see if we're going to go through the each of the result. So database thought of save result. We're going to go through the list of the result here that we have received. And for each of the record, we are checking if SR is successful. If this particular record is successful, we want to display the ID of the record which went through. So we can say successfully and we can provide the ID of that record which successfully was inserted. And if there is an issue with that particular record, let's say I want to display that as well. So if you wanted to go ahead and display the error, so we can go ahead and use, go through the error messages. So in order to do that, we can go ahead and say, so this condition will be executed for the failed records. So whatever the record, whichever records have failed, will go through this else, state, else block. I'm gonna go ahead and look at the error. So this particular method will give us the error information. So we're going to go ahead and go through each of the error information. And let's say I wanted to go ahead and display
If you want to display the status code, we can do that. There's a method available as well. If you want to display the status code, so this is the method. And if you want to display the error message as well, we can do that the error message as well. So this method to get the error message is called get message. So this is going to go ahead and give you display you the error. What is the reason for the error? And if you wanted to see which fields are responsible or which fields are affected, then we can also get the information related to the field. So invoice object fields affected. So we can even get the information because the customer field is missing. So this is what it's going to display. So let me walk you through the code one more time. So what we have done here is we are trying to insert a customer record and we are trying to insert two invoice record related to that customer. So the first line here is we are creating a customer object and we are setting up the name of the customer as test. And then we are using the simple DML query to insert that particular customer into the Salesforce database. Now next step. Now we are creating an empty list of the invoices that we need to add to the Salesforce database. So here we have created an empty list. Now we are creating a first invoice object that we want to add to this particular list. So the first invoice object we are creating here, we are setting up the status of the invoice as pending. The customer related for which the invoice is, we are setting up that value for the customer as well. And then we are providing the amount paid value as 1000 for this invoice. And then we are adding this invoice to this list. So we have successfully created our first invoice object. Then we are trying to create the second invoice. We have set the status of the second invoice as pending. Amount paid value for the second invoice is 700. But we have not set up the customer relate for that particular invoice, even though the customer is a required field. And then we have added that particular invoice into this invoice list. Then we are calling the database insert method and we are passing in two parameters. The first parameter is the list of the invoice records that we need to insert. And the second parameter is all or none. And the value for the parameter we have set it to false, which means that even if there is a record at fault, the rest of the records will go through successfully without disturbing it, without disturbing the execution of the program. And the further one record will just get failed. And then we are going and this particular database insert is giving back a response and we are storing that response in this particular variable called SR list. We are going through this SR list, we are looping through it or we are iterating over through this list and check and checking which records are successful and which records are have failed. So if the if this particular record is successful, we are displaying that okay, this is the record that went through successfully. And if there is an error message, we are displaying the error message related to that particular record. We are displaying the status code of the, of the error. And we are also displaying that what are the fields that are responsible for that error. So the get fields is going to give me the information that, okay, this field is messing up, is missing. And that's why there is an error. So let's go ahead and execute it. Right now, we do not have any customer with the name test. And we also do not have any invoices. We only have three invoices that we already created earlier. So now we're going to go ahead and execute this program. We're going to hit the execute button. It is an issue here, data.save result. So it is not data.save result. It is database.save result. This is sr.getid. Line 28, system. This is errors. So even there is an issue with one error, it still went through. It did not give any exception. If you go to the debug only section, you will see that this particular invoice record is successfully inserted and this is the ID of the invoice record that, that went through fine. And then there's an error which has occurred 
and there is a required field missing. So you're, you're now, you haven't provided the value for the required field and it tells you that this is the field which is missing. And it also gives you that this is the field that is missing. So let's go ahead and see if that the invoice was successfully inserted or not. If you see, there is a fourth invoice got added. And if you remember, we have set up the value for the amount paid to be 1000 for this invoice. The customer is the test customer. And then the status is pending. Whereas for the other one, if you see here, there is a customer got created with the name of test. So you can see here there is a test customer. And then the invoice that it created, it only created one because the other had an issue. That's why it did not go through. So we were only successfully able to create one invoice which had all the information and which also had the required value information. So this is what the partial update is. See, out of those, even if there was one record which was at fault, the rest of the records went through successfully. That is what the partial update is. And that is what the database methods are so popular for because they are very flexible. Using the database methods, you can even see which records were successful, which records were failed, and what are the reasons for those failures. So it gives you a detailed description, and this is about the insert operation using the database methods. In the next tutorial, we are going to go ahead and take a look at the update operation using the database methods. So I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thank you so much.